was, what was the Earth like before it was covered in water? What was it like? Uh, well, we have the Earth uh, condensing out of the gas. I mean, the universe starts off according to Big Bang. Right, so as, as it condensed, it didn't have water, right? Uh, no, the, the water is there shortly after but, the but, Earth but, forms. But, but at the very beginning, it didn't. At the very beginning, uh, we did have water there, but not in a liquid form. No, uh, but the Earth wasn't covered with water originally, right well, from the very beginning. It depends how you, how you would understand it. I mean, if you've got water vapor... But, but see, as it's condensing, out of, I mean, it, it's, it's not condensing as, just like the Bible describes, in the beginning you have the Earth and it was covered with water. Okay. What we have the text saying is in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, which I see as a reference to the entire universe. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Waltke kind of taught me that, that it's referring to the whole of the universe. Uh, it's a merism, it could be. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have God taking us down to this newly formed earth, the earth that was formless and void. And at that point, now it doesn't tell us exactly what stage in the formation of the earth we have uh, Genesis 1, 2, and 1, 3. But at that point, it tells us it's empty of life, it's unfit for life, it's dark on the surface of the waters, and the waters cover the whole surface of the exactly. earth. Exactly. Which is, which is uh, if, if you start with an earth just like that, that does not fit with the Big Bang model. It does. No, it doesn't. Big Bang cosmology would tell us that you would have a solar system forming in such a way that uh, we would have the earth starting See, off. See, that's a whole point. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible has the sun, moon, and stars made on day four. I don't think it says that. What it talks so, about the sun, moon, and stars on well, day my four. My Bible does. <laughs> okay. Verse 14, it talks about let there be the sun, moon, and stars. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, so that they may serve to mark mm -hmm. seasons. We've been talking about this, mm -hmm. to mark days and years. Mm -hmm. And verse 16 says, so God made the sun, moon, and stars. Mm -hmm. Notice it doesn't specify when he made the sun, moon, and stars. It could have been any time previous to the fourth day. He, he made them on day four. And then we were talking about Job 38. Job 38 says, Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness? In other words, it was dark upon the face of the deep, not because there was a lack of light from the sun, moon, and stars, but it's because there was this atmosphere that wrapped it in darkness. How, let me ask you a question. How do you know that's a reference to the creation account? How do you know that couldn't be a reference, for instance, to the flood? I don't think so, because what we see in Job 38 and 39, just like in Psalm 104, addresses the content of all six creation days. Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you know Psalm 104 talks about ships, talks about Lebanon, talks about bread, talks about wine? That's not a creation account. Read the rest of it. I, it, it's referring back to creation, but it's talking about present things. That's not a creation account like Genesis. I think it is. I, I mean, I, it covers every, uh, every Hugh, one of the six creation There weren't ships days. in Genesis. There wasn't Lebanon. There wasn't bread. Look, I'm not denying that it doesn't cover other things, but certainly it addresses the six it's, creation days. It's, it's, it's in the poetic literature, and it's the psalmist praising the God of creation and then looking at the present world. This is not a historical narrative. It's actually giving you more scientific detail on what God did in the six creation days than you get in if Genesis there was a chapter 1. If, if there was a global flood, if there was a global flood, and there was, because the scripture makes that very clear, um, there was a global flood. Even Augustine believed in a global flood. So if you're going to quote Augustine about days, you better quote him about the flood too. But... Um, uh, when it says they may not return to cover the earth, they did return. Uh, they well, did cover the earth at the flood. That, that's that's a reference to the fl to the flood. But see, when I read the flood account, I see a flood that's universal but not global. It wiped out all humanity. It wiped all the nephesh creatures associated with humanity. So the water stood 15 cubits above the mountain and stood there for months and didn't go anywhere. Uh, while we have water flowing off the higher mountains, that keeps it uh, at that level.